Snestrunk. Hello everyone, the Snestrunk here, and the objective of this video is to highlight some games on the Super Famicom for games that were only released in Japan for the most part. I'm talking about games that are still playable for people who do not speak or understand Japanese or read kanji. Now there are a ton of games that fit this criteria, but I'm going to set the limit at somewhere around 25 or 30 for this video. I might do another video later at some point, but uh... Also, I've put a link in the description that leads to a video that shows how you can adjust your Super Nintendo to play Super Famicom games. It's really not complicated at all, you just move two plastic tabs with the pliers and you're ready to go. There's also a picture there that depicts the part that you need to remove. Unfortunately, this does not work on a PAL console. It only works on the NTSC, just so you know. Now, most of these games are going to be platformers, obviously, because they're the most straight-ahead style of games, where what you see is what you get. Also, I will try my best to pronounce everything right. Uh, I want to thank my friend the Jesus for helping me with the pronunciations, but uh, please bear in mind I'm a white guy from the Midwestern United States, and uh, that's not an excuse, it's just an explanation why I'm going to butcher most of these titles, but I'll do the best that I can. I also want to thank the people at the Super Nintendo subreddit, as well as the Racket Boy forums, for suggesting games for this video. First, I'm going to start out with the games that actually do exist elsewhere, but their English translations are just obscenely expensive, so the Japanese release is a cheaper alternative. First and foremost, I'm referring to Hagane, though it's pretty hard to find, so its prices are just frickin' ridiculous. However, you're not missing out on a whole lot if you just get the Super Famicom version. It's still a bit pricey, but it's well worth playing. It's a massively entertaining action platformer, where literally every button on your controller does an attack of some kind. Once you get used to the control, it is really fun to play. However, be forewarned, because this game is extremely difficult. In fact, it's probably the hardest game to beat on either the SNES or the Super Famicom. I'm not kidding. Other cheaper games that are worth considering on the Super Famicom rather than the Super Nintendo are the Mega Man X series, which of course is known as the Rockman series in Japan. Speaking of Rockman, there's also Rockman and Forte, or Rockman and Bass, or Bass, or something. This game came out of nowhere in 1998, which is really late in the Super Famicom lifespan, but if you love Mega Man, you simply have to get this game. It's done in the same style as Mega Man 7, and it's the kind of quality that you would expect. And by that, I mean it's really hard, but in a good way. It did get ported to the Game Boy Advance, but personally, I'd rather play it on the Super Nintendo. Next, there's Twin B Rainbow Bell Adventures. Those bastards in Europe got this one, but the US missed out. Seriously, it's one of the smoothest platformers I've ever played. The freedom you have to run or fly around in any direction is very cool. The graphics and the animation for the special attacks are fantastic. This game is majorly addicting. If you like stuff like Sonic the Hedgehog or Plock, you would love this one. Next there's Hamelin No Violin Tamaki, which I cannot recommend highly enough. I love the artwork and the animation going on here, and the stuff between the two characters cracks me up. There's a lot of anime style slapstick going on here. You do have to skip through quite a bit of text, but that's okay. This game is a lot of fun, and it will make you laugh regardless. Deae Tonosama Apare Ishiban is another game with a lot of personality. This one takes quite a bit to get used to, but I really like it. It reminds me a bit of Legend of the Mystical Ninja. It gives me that same kind of vibe. There's also Do Re Mi Fantasy. Milon no Doki Doki Daiboken. I like a lot of variety in my platforming games, and this one delivers pretty nicely. There's a story here, but you can skip everything and just get to the action. There's Gogo Akman. Hey, a game I can actually pronounce, kinda. There are actually three of these games, and they all feature character design and artwork from Akira Toriyama, who you'd recognize, of course, from Dragon Ball Z. Again, a really solid series of platformers with tight controls. For a change of pace, there's Maju Uo, a much darker looking game with smaller sprites but brilliant backgrounds and artwork. You kill zombies and get chased by a giant cake frosting dispenser. Okay. Hyper Iria is more of an exploration kind of game. You have pretty large maps to explore and you gotta find your way around. The hints are all in Japanese of course, but this game is still a quality piece of work. Last but not least, there's Super Back to the Future 2, which the Anger Video Game Nerd has obviously already covered, but it's a pretty good game on its own, it's worth mentioning. For fighting games, there's Gundam Wing Endless Duel, and seriously, just look at this game. Do I even need to say anything? It's ginormous mech robots fighting Street Fighter style. What the hell else do you need? This is freaking awesome! The beat-em-up genre is straightforward by nature, it's hard to go wrong here. My preference is Shonen Ninja Sasuke. I just love the speed of this game, it plays like a Genesis game almost. What other 16-bit beat-em-up is there where you fly across the screen that quickly? I love it. And also there's Ghost Chaser Densai, which is solid button-mashing fun. Parodius, if you couldn't guess, is a light-hearted spin-off of Gradius, and it's really bizarre in that Japanese kind of way. This game is like it was pulled straight out of some crazy person's imagination. Europe got this game, and the US didn't. Those bastards. 
The same goes for Pop and Twinbee, another creative take on the shooter genre, and it balances airborne and land-based enemies really well. And then of course there is Rendering Ranger R2. With this game, I am still pissed to this day that it never got a proper release anywhere else. Look at the chaos going on, this is just fucking awesome. The downside is that it's pretty expensive, it's very much in demand, and so it's one of the more expensive games on the Super Famicom. But man, you can talk yourself into spending the money pretty quickly, it's that fun. For racing, Battle Racers is really the only game I've been able to find so far that's really worthwhile. It reminds me of F-Zero, but with some combat elements and a few cool power-ups. Again, if you know any other Japanese racing games, drop me a line in the comments. For puzzle games, of course there's the Bomberman series. The US only got the first two games, and there's three more from Japan that are perfectly playable, and they're excellent multiplayer games, that should go without saying. There's also Super Tetris 3, which is yet another variant on the Tetris formula, but this one is actually pretty good. There's oddball-shaped pieces and different types of blocks that you have to contend with. And then last, but certainly not least, we get to the RPGs. Now, of course, it's going to be awfully tough to play a role-playing game that's presented entirely in Japanese. However, some hardworking folks in various corners of the internet have made reproduction cards cartridges, and English patches for some of these games. Just Google Super Nintendo Reproduction Card and see for yourself. As for the games themselves, I can't go too far into detail without doing them justice, so just to list a few? I'd have to list Treasure Hunter G, Bahamut Lagoon, the Dragon Quest series, Final Fantasy V, Live a Live, the Shin Megami Tensei series, and of course, Second and Setsu 3, or Secret of Mana 2. Seriously, if you liked Link to the Past or Secret of Mana, or any kind of game in that style, you have to play Second and Setsu 3. It is absolutely outstanding, and one of the best games on either the Super Nintendo or the Super Famicom. So yeah, anyway, that's just a brief overview of some of the games that can translate over, even if you don't understand any Japanese or can read kanji or anything like that. Thanks for watching, and I hope to do another one of these videos again sometime.